And now, Gangbusters! Gangbusters, presented in cooperation with police and federal law enforcement departments throughout the United States. The only national program that brings you authentic police case histories. Tonight, Gangbusters celebrates its 14th anniversary. Since its beginning in 1936, Gangbusters has presented over 600 actual police case histories and aided in the apprehension of over 350 wanted criminals. Tonight, Gangbusters has asked the Honorable John C. Hilly, Assistant United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York, to narrate tonight's case of the Golden Touch. Mr. Hilly. Thank you, Roger Foster, and good evening, Gangbusters listeners. Tonight's case began rather inauspiciously late one night, not too many months ago in a diner on the lower west side of New York. This diner was frequented mainly by dock wallopers from nearby piers and drivers and loaders from the nearby truck terminals. A wiry young man in work clothes was sitting at the counter over a cup of coffee when a heavy set man walked toward the empty stool beside him. Hello, Ralph. How's the coffee? Oh, Victor. Hi. A uh, cup of coffee. Black? Catch your uh, Where you been keeping yourself, Ralph? Been working. Good. Glad to hear it. Where? At Woods Trucking. Yeah, doing what? I'm checking loads. Uh, I gotta get back, Victor. See you around. Oh, wait a minute. I'll walk part of the way with you. What about your coffee? Uh, the coffee here stinks. Hey, you are, bud. Forget the coffee, will you? You're looking great, Ralph. Yeah. Was feeling great, too. After you, Ralph? Hmm. Thanks. I, uh, I go this way. I've been looking for you, Ralph. That's so? Yeah. I want you to get me a load. Well, don't look my way, Victor. I had enough. Well, I got everything set. I got a big buyer uptown. Lots of dough. Look, I like dough as well as the next guy, but I don't want to take another fall, so that's that. No, you won't take any fall. Nobody will take a fall. You get me a load of scotch whiskey, we'll make a nice piece of change. A buyer will pay $25 a case for all we can get. Look, I don't want to get jammed up again, Victor. It ain't worth it. I like breathing free air. Well, think it over, kid, and let me know. Can I uh, meet you someplace after work? No, not tonight. I got to meet Dee Dee for a drink after. Oh, date with a wife, huh? Yeah. Okay, Ralph, I'll be in touch with you. You think it over, huh? But I don't... Just think it over. You'll get two and a half G's for doing nothing. So long, Ralph. Yeah. So long. Beanie baby, I didn't come here to talk foolish. I came to enjoy a drink. Look, Ralph, it stands to reason. You gotta get that load for Victor. What have you got to lose? What have I got to lose? I'll tell you what I got to lose. Got another several years off my life to lose. Has Victor taken a fall yet? Has he? I ain't worried about Victor. I'm worried about myself. His FBI's ain't dumb, you know. Talk to the liquor out of my terminal gets hijacked. I'll be the first guy they talk to. So what good in talking get them? No. How do you ever expect to get anywhere in this world if you don't take a chance? Say, listen, baby, whose side are you on anyway? Who? Has Victor been talking to you? To me? Why should Victor be talking to me? How did he find out where I was? How did he find out I was working again in a truck terminal? But well, don't ask me. There are millions of ways of finding out those things if you want to find them out. Yeah. Ralph, I'm telling you, you're passing up the opportunity of a lifetime. It's like money in the bank. Victor already has a buyer lined up. Oh, if I had any sense, I'd go right to the FBI with this thing. Right to the FBI and tell them all about it. Now, wouldn't that be just love? But I... Guess I got no sense. Oh, Ralph, I knew you'd do it. I just knew it. Special agent service, aren't you? Oh, hello, Mr. Service. I, uh, I don't know if you remember me. You had me up on hijacking a couple of years ago. What's your name? I'll remember you. Well, that, that can keep for a minute, Mr. Service. But would you FBI's like to break up a hijacking before it starts? I think we would. What's it all about? Well, a, a certain party has come to me and asked me to line up a load of liquor. Now, I don't want to get jammed up again, Mr. Service. I, I'm clean. I want to stay clean. 
Why don't you come here and tell me about it? Oh, well, look, Mr. Service. Uh, uh, how about City Hall Park, huh? Uh, City Hall Park in, in a half an hour. Okay. But who is this? Well, it's, uh... It's Ralph Sarek, Mr. Service. Remember? Yes. Okay, Ralph, City Hall Park in half an hour. Hello, Ralph. Oh, well, Mr. Service. Come on, let's sit down on the bench, then. No, no, I think we'd better walk. Sure. Maybe this wasn't such a good place to meet after all in broad daylight like this. Huh? You don't think anybody's behind you? I don't know about that. I wouldn't put it past Victor. Victor Rossi? Yeah, Victor Rossi. He's the one. Hold it there. Hey, hey, taxi! Where are we going? We can talk riding around. Get in, Ralph. Okay, yeah. Head up down, driver. So it's Victor who wants you to get him alone. Yeah, that's right, Mr. Service. Ain't that good information for you? I always knew you wanted to make Victor. This isn't a make, Ralph. Well, isn't it? I, I Tell thought... me something. Uh, why didn't you get him alone? Oh, well, look, Mr. Service. I don't want to do any more time. I had enough in there. Why didn't you just tell Victor no and forget about it? Well, you know how it is, Mr. Service. Uh, by not getting him the load, I passed up a two and a half cheap touch at least. I, I figured it. Well, you know, if the government's so anxious to get a make on Victor to collar him. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, Ralph, I know what you mean. But the government doesn't pay out money to anybody unless they work for it. Work? Work how, Mr. Service? You find that load for Victor. We'll let him hijack it. We will? We will. That's the only way we'll get a make on him. Well, but Mr. Service... It's settled, isn't it? Yeah, it's settled. And keep your ears open. Keep my ears open. I want all the information you can bring me about the buyer. My boss wants the buyer as bad as he wants Victor. Worse than he wants Victor. Yeah, the buyer. Well, Ralph, how do you think you'll like working for the government? Uh, it's going to be hard to get used to, Mr. Service. Awful hard. Yes? Me, Victor. Val. Okay, just a second. Oh, Victor. Well? Got your load, Victor. Yeah. What? 1,150 cases of scotch. How's that? Yeah, that sounds all right. When's it coming in? Uh, the ship docks tomorrow over in Jersey, Hoboken. How's it come over? Through the Holland Tunnel? No, on the Cortland Street Ferry. When something lands in Hoboken, we always bring it over on the ferry. Well, it ain't much of a ride from the ferry up to your terminal. Yeah, we'll have to grab the truck on the ferry. Hey, can you do that? Well, sure, why not? How many men on the truck? Two, uh, driving a helper. Yeah, that won't be any trouble. You're sure it's 1,100 and some cases? Listen, I've seen a manifest. Okay, Ralph, it's a deal. 10%? 10%. Yeah. Uh, is this uh, one buyer going to take it all at 25 bucks a case? Every drop. Can he handle it all? Yeah, he's a big operator uptown. He's got a string of small clubs. He can handle it all right. Yeah. Uh, do I know him? What are you so interested in the buyer for? Me? I, I, I don't know. I just want to be sure. Sure of what? Well, listen, I'm a part of this deal. I'm entitled to have the facts, don't you think? I'm telling you the facts. Okay, okay. So don't worry about it. Okay, I, I was just wondering. Well, stop wondering. Everything's taken care of. Now, how about a drink on it? Uh, no, no, thanks. I, I gotta run along. I gotta meet Dee Dee. Oh? Well, have a good time. Don't I always? Now, give my regards to Dee Dee. Yeah, I will. So long, Victor. Uh, you'll hear from me when I get the information. All right, Ralph. I'll be waiting. Yeah, tomorrow sometime. Just sit tight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Baby. Baby. Is he gone? Yeah, he's gone. <laughs> gone to meet you. I forgot to tell him. I'm tied up. Yeah, you're a smart kid, baby. Roping him in like that when he didn't want to be roped. I got a system, Victor. <laughs> Give me a kiss, baby. No. Come on. Please, Victor. Listen, what are you getting, Coy? It's all part of my system. You'll get your kiss when I'm ready. You're a smart kid. You're too smart for Ralph, huh? You said it, Victor. <laughs> You're too smart for me. <laughs> I want something I want it. Now, come here. Thank you. <laughs> oh, but I like you, 
baby. <laughs> Why, cute. <laughs> Too bad you're married to Ralph, isn't it? Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> After we make this touch, we'll get around to doing something about it. Uh, okay. Okay. Well, gangbusters listeners, that's how this case progressed. An FBI informant was in on the plans of the liquor hijacking as the conspiracy got underway. But even the best laid traps are in danger of springing too soon or snaring the wrong game. And once again, here's tonight's narrator... The Honorable John C. Hilly, Assistant United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York. Well, as I was telling you, FBI, FBI agents of the New York field office had an informant planted in a ring of liquor hijackers. And as information came to him, Special Agent Larry Service brought it to his supervisor, John Humphrey. John, Ralph just phoned. He said Victor took the bait. He'll go after the load on the ferry. Good. The buyer's supposed to be a nightclub owner. No information on the drop. I wonder if Ralph knows his wife has been seeing Victor. I doubt it. What do you think he'll do when he finds out? I'm just as worried about what he'll do if he doesn't find out. Whatever he tells Dee Dee's going to be relayed to Victor as fast as she can get there. Yeah. Yeah, I know, Larry. He said he hasn't told a soul about his connection with us, but there aren't many secrets between a man and his wife. Well, maybe we won't have anything to worry about. The touch will come off tomorrow. Uh, John. Yeah? Ralph keeps warning me Victor might get rough with the drivers. Uh... We'll take care of that, Larry. You and I are going to be the drivers. Oh, that takes care of it all right, doesn't it? Yeah, takes care of it fine. That drive onto the ferry's awful narrow, John. You sure you can wheel this trailer through there? I'm going to try, I'll tell you that. Where'd you learn to push one of these things, anyway? Never even been in one until yesterday. Oh, great, you're doing okay. Take a look through that mirror, Larry. See how our friends are doing. They're still back there. The car and all for them. You gotta hand it to Victor. He knows his business. Okay, try that rig on a boat. Go ahead, John. Yeah. Watch it. Watch this side. Easy, easy. Easy there. Okay, go ahead. Not bad, huh? Not bad. I thought you were going to take a bulkhead with you. Oh, no, it wasn't that close. It was close enough. <laughs> Whew, I'm telling you, I'm going to feel a lot safer in Victor's hands than I felt riding in this thing with you. Keep your fingers crossed anyway. If he wants to be, he can be plenty tough. You're telling me. But if we're as meek as lambs, he won't bother with any rough stuff. John, you never saw a meeker lamb. <laughs> Over there. A couple of our men. Mac and James. Good. They're the ones who are going to tail the truck, right? That's right. Oh, that's a tough assignment. Thank goodness that didn't happen to me. Come on, let's go out and get a smoke, huh? Yeah, I could use something. Go on. Victor's boys are getting out of their car. Huh? Yeah, looks like the moment... Did you know that they were crying for help in the Bureau of Census, the Department of Commerce? Is that so? Yeah, I just happen to have an application here in my pocket. Take out your pack and your cigarette. Oh. Here comes Victor. Yeah. Have a cigarette? Thanks. Hello, boys. <laughs> nice day on the river, ain't it? Yeah. Smells better today. Now, listen to me. A truck of yours. I'm going to take it. What? Who oh, are you kidding? i got four boys standing around here. They all got guns and they're all itching for target practice. Understand me? That's pretty plain. So I'm taking the truck. Oh, now listen. Look, we... bud, I got nothing against you. All I want is that load. But if I have to kill you to get it, you're going to get killed. Now, you wouldn't want to die over a lousy load of scotch whiskey, would you? You got a point. Okay. Walk on back past your rig. There's a sedan there right behind it. Go on, watch. Yeah. The keys in the truck? Yeah, they're in there. Okay. Keep watching you're doing fine, boys. You got lots of sense. Okay. I'll in. Hey, look. Get in. Come on, Johnny. Won't get any place arguing. Yeah. I guess I won't. That's the attitude, boys. Now, here. 
There's some goggles for you. Put them on. Don't try to look out through them. It won't do you any good. The glass is painted over. So just sit there and relax. Hmm. For relaxing, there's nothing like a ferry ride across the Hudson. <laughs> There. Hey, Dee Dee, be careful with that coffee. It's hot. You're lucky I don't pour it over your head. What's the matter with you, anyway? I'd just like to know why you're sitting here at 11 o'clock in the morning drinking your third cup of coffee when right now the load is being delivered to the drop. Listen, baby. First of all, I worked at the terminal till 1 o'clock this morning, so I'm entitled to drink as much coffee as I want at 11. Second, I've done my part. Victor don't need me anymore. Besides, I don't know where the drop is. Pass the sugar. Brother, are you small potatoes? Here. I mean, I'm small potatoes. Don't throw things around like that. You're the key man in the operation, and you get a stinking 10%. Ain't 10% enough for you? You want to know the truth? No. Okay, do it out then. What kind of a big dealer do you think you are? I don't need you, Mr. Small Potatoes. Oh, now, baby. I can go where the big money is. Why should I wait around for you to get up a little nerve? Dee Dee. You're through, And you don't know it. Huh? It's me and Victor. Victor? You heard. It's been going on for months. You're kidding. Am I? We were just waiting for this touch to make it final. Yeah? Well, you'll see how final it is. You'll see where Victor winds up. You'll wind up three notches above you. Yeah, you can go visit him in Atlanta. You... Where? Ah, oh, come on, Dee Dee. Sit down and, and, and let's be like a man and wife should be. Where did you say I could visit Victor? Now, Dee Dee... Have I... you sung to the FBI on this deal? Oh, thank you. You have, haven't you? I should have known you would. Victor will kill you. Dee, where are you going? Where do you think I'm going? I'm going to find Victor. Dee Dee! Next floor, boys. Just hang on to the railing and you'll be okay. Listen, I can't see anything. That's just the idea of the goggles. Hang on to the railing. Okay, you up front. That's the last step. Follow that railing around. Yeah. The railing. Okay, stop here. Inside. Inside where? Come on, come on. This way. Now sit down on the floor. Both of you. Yeah, but what... Sit down. Now listen. I'm leaving one of my boys outside the door for ten minutes. I want you to keep those glasses on and stay still. You get me? Yeah, we get you. Now you've been pretty good boys, both of you. So here's a little something for your trouble. Don't spend it all in one place. Remember, ten minutes. I'll see you. You okay, John? Yeah, Larry. You can take the glasses off. That ten minutes routine was just a bluff. Hey, look, he handed us twenty dollars apiece. Generous guy, isn't he? Yeah. Where are we, anyway? I'd say it's a condemned tenement house. Well, let's get going. Now, we'd better wait a few minutes anyway, just in case... Then I want to call the office and see if they followed the truck to the drop okay. Special Agent Dean. Hello, Dean. John Humphrey. Hello, John. Everything okay? Yeah, fine. Where's the drop? Where'd they take the truck? A small garage on Murray Street, number 653. Mac and James are keeping it under surveillance. I see. Uh, something's going wrong, though. What? Well, Ralph phoned a few minutes ago. He said Dee Dee accidentally found out he was singing and she's on her way to Victor. Oh, no. That's what he said. Look, get hold of Mac and James. Tell them if she shows up at the drop to pick her up quietly and bring her in. Right, okay. Meantime, service and I will try to locate her elsewhere. We've got to grab her before she sees Victor. If we don't, we'll never make that buyer. Yeah, who is it? Victor home? No, he isn't. What do you want? Well, look, I got business with him. I'm buying some stuff off him. Some stuff that just came in today. Okay. He's down unloading the... Hiya, Dee Dee. Listen. Special agents of the FBI. I don't care what you are. You can't come busting in here. We're in. So you haven't seen Victor yet. What's this to you? It's plenty to us. You just come along, you'll find out. Take your hands off of me. Dee don't get stubborn. Come on, let's go. We're getting you out of here before Victor comes back and we have to carry you. You might just as well come along like a good little girl. Now, in the doorway. Hello, Mr. Service. Step in here. Look, I'm sorry I'm so late. I can't find Dee Dee any place. She must have gone to Victor. They must have skipped together. Don't worry about Dee Dee. We've got her. You have? We found her at Victor's place before she had a chance to talk to Victor. How do you like that, Mr. Service? Look what she does to me. After I give her the best years of my life. Yeah, it's rough. I could murder that Victor. But Dee Dee, I, I still love her. Ain't that strange? I could go I could go back to her and bend at me. Well, you've got a little something else to do for us first. Yeah? 
What, for instance? We'll know who the buyer is when he takes delivery. Then we can nail him. Yeah, that's what a guy gets for buying merchandise with heat on it. But we'll get Victor when he pays you off. Yeah. Uh, I-, I was thinking, uh, is there any chance I could keep the money? After all, if... No, I guess not, huh? You guessed right, Ralph. That's our evidence against the buyer. But you just wait till the job's finished. Now, where do you think your payoff will be? I don't know. I've got no idea. Well, try to make it some public place, a bar, maybe. Some place where we can watch the transaction and step in as soon as the change is made. And now, gangbusters! Hello, Ralph. How are you? For crying out loud, Victor. How long do you want me to sit and wait for you? How are things going, Ralph? Come on, give me my end of the score. Let's get out of here. What's the matter? Dee Dee waiting for you someplace? What do you got Dee Dee so much in your mind for? Come on, pay off. Now, look, Ralph. I could find a market for all the loads you line up. There ain't gonna be any more loads. I pushed my luck far enough. You and Dee Dee going on a vacation? You ain't seen Dee Dee in three days. You haven't? No, she ran out of me. Oh, no, that's too bad, Ralph. <laughs> ah, but here, this ought to cheer you up. Thanks. $2,875 is all in that envelope. Yeah, it better be. Now I got a big piece of news for you, Ralph. Hmm? I got a wire from Dee Dee. She's in Atlantic City waiting for me. Hey, how do you like that? Yeah, I got a big piece of news for you. You're going to get right, this... Victor. Hey, what's going on here? The special agents of the FBI. Hey, so well, watch you. You've got a gun. Sure, I got a gun. Give me that. Go. Oh, I... Beautiful, John. Let me out. I'll tear him apart. I'll break his back. Okay, Ralph, I'll take it easy. Stealing a lady like that. Stealing a man's wife. I'll tear him apart. He's had enough for now. Let him sleep this off. Yeah. Yeah, let him sleep this off. All right, you people, stand back. Come on, it's all over. There's nothing to see. Come on, now, there's nothing to see. Hey, Mr. Service, you know something? Uh, I, I kind of like this working for the government. <laughs> hey, there must be something to this civil service business. Sure, Ralph, there's a lot to it. You don't make much money, but there's always plenty of laughs. That, gangbusters listeners, was how this hijacking syndicate was broken up. The leader, his accomplices, and the buyer of the stolen merchandise were all tried in federal court and received the maximum penalties. It was the hard work of agents of the Federal Bureau of Investigation in skillfully using an informant that wrapped this case together. Well, thank you, Assistant United States Attorney John C. Hilly, for this most amazing case history. And gangbusters, congratulations to all the FBI agents who participated in this difficult investigation. And now we take you back to gangbusters. Tonight marks the 14th anniversary of gangbusters in its crusade against crime. At this milestone, it is indeed a great pleasure to bring you a message from the Honorable James A. Pride, Chief of the Washington State Patrol. Hearty congratulations to Gangbusters on its 14th anniversary of splendid service. The long history of the program and the enthusiastic response of listeners everywhere are proof of success. May this anniversary be more than a recapitulation of past accomplishment. May it mark a milestone of success, which may continue for many years to come. The next message comes from the Honorable Carl G. Bachman, Mayor of the City of Wheeling, West Virginia. Congratulations to Gangbusters on its 14th anniversary. Gangbusters has done an outstanding job of helping the American people to understand more fully the work police officers and enforcement agencies are doing for their protection. And finally, the Honorable Homer Garrison, Jr., Director of the Texas Department of Public Safety, has this to say. Hearty congratulations to Gangbusters for its 14 fruitful years of enlightenment and entertainment to the public and its aid to the cause of law enforcement and justice. No better justification for its continued existence can be offered than that it may persevere in advancing in the public's conscience the individual responsibility of each citizen in the perpetual war of law and order versus crime. Thank you, Director Garrison, Mayor Bachman, and Chief Pride, for these fine tributes to gangbusters on its 14th anniversary. Your words will serve as a great challenge throughout the years to come. Tonight's case was dramatized by Stanley Niss and directed by George Zachary, with Carl Eastman and Chuck Webster in leading roles. Roger Foster speaking. Gangbusters is a Phillips H. Lord production.